close to the international airport in the capital city of Saudi Arabia, this magnificent skyscraper will stand two kilometers tall. Yes, you heard that correctly. Designed by Norman Foster, this building, which seeks to defy all laws of physics, will more than double the height of the famous Burj Khalifa, which at 828 meter is currently the world's tallest building. The daring structure will also surpass the 1,000 meter tall Jeddah Tower, Saudi Arabia's previous attempt at breaking the record. Now the question is, what are the safety implications of constructing such a structure? And what are the challenges that would have to be overcome before this majestic building comes to reality? Join us as we share with you the specifics of this record-breaking challenge as architects and engineers around the globe excitedly await its possibility. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has unveiled plans to build a skyscraper that will be an astounding two kilometers tall, a daring move that has drawn attention from all across the world. When completed, it would easily top the present world record for the highest building, doubling the height of the famous Burj Khalifa. Interestingly, this would be Saudi Arabia's second attempt to build the world's tallest building. The 1,000-meter-high Jeddah Tower is currently under construction in Jeddah. The first images of the Jeddah Tower were released in 2011, with construction starting shortly after in 2013. However, the project was put on hold and only restarted last year. While the specific brief for designing and constructing the two-kilometer-tall building is currently unknown, we explore the challenges the design team will undoubtedly face in bringing this ambitious project to fruition. For the team of architects and engineers, it demands careful consideration of many factors, including environmental impact, stability, and livability. To begin with, building construction currently uses tower cranes, but for a tower this high, concerns have been raised about how a tower crane driver will function at such altitudes for the tower crane to function optimally, modifications will be necessary. The building's construction will need the assistance of a tower crane with a lift. However, this technology is still in the early stages of development. The difficulties a tower crane driver faces grow as the building gets taller. It would be difficult to reach the cabin without a lift, and crane operation would require high levels of accuracy. It would also be difficult to get the tools and equipment needed for regular maintenance. Also, such a building's design must take its physical and environmental effects into account. The structure will have a large footprint, and as more people use it, more space will be required. Engineers must use their expertise to design a structure that is efficient, safe, and sustainable. The building's thinness, height, and shape would cause a lot of issues. Therefore, the thickness of the floor plan is crucial to the design. Since everything becomes concentrated and there is a lot of tension on the ground level, an efficient core is required, which increases complexity and necessitates a structure that is thicker than a typical Manhattan city block. Furthermore, it is very difficult to design a building that rises to a height of two kilometers, especially when it comes to controlling the pressures acting on it. One of the most powerful forces is wind, and while the structure's core helps keep it from collapsing, other elements also need to be taken into account. The building's self-weight, as well as the foundations and structures, must be intended to support the enormous weight. The building also needs to be able to adjust to changes in wind direction and intensity. The distance between the force's point of impact at the bottom and top of the building provides a substantial variation in effect, which causes movement and instability, even if the wind force does not change significantly with height. A large weight at the top of the building acting as a damper and moving at a particular frequency to lessen movement has long been the solution for this issue. In addition, the design removes shear walls that would have limited the amount of space outside the core and takes advantage of large holes in the building's exterior to let the wind flow over it. Beyond stability and environmental issues, there are other problems involved in creating a structure two kilometers tall. The quantity of individuals that must effectively move throughout the structure is an often neglected but important concern. 
The net to gross ratio, which indicates how much of the building's area is occupied by the structural core, plumbing, and other components, becomes a statistic to take into account when there are 100,000 residents and employees. The problem of lift conveyance remains a major obstacle, though. When there are hundreds of floors, individuals want to get to their goal quickly and don't want to make many stops along the way. Increasing the number of elevators in the building brings with it its own set of problems, such as the paradox of having to give up more interior space for the necessary elevators. Using double-deck lifts, which can transport twice as many passengers in a single trip and so require fewer lift shafts, is one possible option. But in addition to the building's core, engineers and designers also need to think about how people move through it and how easily accessible it is. Solving the challenge of lift transportation is one small piece of a vast puzzle, but it is essential to the building's overall success and purpose. Although double-decker elevators may provide a solution for vertical transportation in tall buildings, the overall design and stability of a skyscraper are crucial. Ultra-tall skyscrapers need to withstand various forces, such as wind, to avoid falling over. The iconic Jetta Tower has a unique shape resembling a propeller to increase strength and resistance to significant forces. By examining earlier big buildings like the CN Tower, we can see that humans have yet to develop a more effective method for creating towering structures that can withstand the different pressures at play. However, creative solutions are being considered, such as bending into the available foundation area or supporting the building with cables. Overcoming the difficulties involved in creating a structure that rises to a height of 2 kilometers offers a chance to push boundaries and experiment as technology develops. As we said earlier, many high-rise building designs use the pendulum action as a very efficient way to counteract wind. This technique is based on the placement of a large, heavy weight at the top of the structure, which moves at a frequency that reduces wind force and dampens building movement. Usually, 80 tons or more of movable steel in the shape of an 18-meter diameter spherical make up this weight. In addition to this pendulum mechanism, architects can optimize structures for wind resistance using different methods. Creating wide apertures on the building's front to let air flow through is one such method. An alternative is to alter the building plan's shape to lessen vortex problems, which could lead to structural instability. Chamfers are another feature that building layouts might use to increase wind pressure. In addition, architects are turning to bridge design for ideas on how to maintain the uprightness of tall buildings. Creative designers have found a number of ways, like the suspension system in bridges, to improve wind resistance and preserve stability in tall, narrow buildings. Nevertheless, a key component of contemporary architecture is creating structures that can endure the force of powerful winds. Architects can design sturdy structures that provide comfort, safety, and visual appeal by implementing creative approaches such as chamfers, big apertures, and the pendulum system. The architects can also turn to the Dubai Creek Tower for inspiration on how to tackle the stability challenge they would no doubt face. Located atop a narrow building, the tower's major feature is an observation deck. Its projected height is 1.3 kilometers, and as a result, more equipment is required to support and stabilize the tower. Using the area surrounding the tower's base to restrict its movement is one tenable method. Another strategy is to increase the efficiency of the core by reducing construction and adding more space to the building. Using cables to sustain the tower rather than just the core construction is an intriguing alternative. Additionally, adding a cable car system might convey people and cargo, while shifting some of the lift's primary responsibilities along the structure's cables, relieving strain and distributing the load more equally. This approach could lead to a more refined and useful design by enhancing overall structural performance and minimizing congestion. By utilizing creative ideas, engineers and architects can design tall structures that provide optimal comfort, safety, and efficient use of available space, thereby contributing to the advancement of modern architecture.
Meanwhile, it's important to remember that for a skyscraper to be considered the world's tallest structure, it must be freestanding, according to the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. This implies that a building may not be able to become a skyscraper if it depends on ropes or cables. A tower must also be livable for half of its height and at least 150 meters tall. Even though we've considered many methods of stability, how would such a structure actually appear in the real world? Lowering the ground level by submerging the building's structure is one way to improve the stability of the structure. Building below the earth will result in bridges that span over the structure, adding extra support to hold it in place even if it is still above the 2-kilometer mark. A convenient transportation pass into the site that connects the skyscraper to other forms of transportation would be advantageous for such a design. By collecting rainwater at the base of the structure, you might even create a microclimate and use the facade to produce energy. There's also the possibility of generating energy via wind power, given the tower's sheer height. However, it's essential to ensure that such energy solutions seamlessly integrate into the building's overall design and don't compromise the structure's stability. All of these ideas convey the vast potential for architectural innovation and technological advancement. By pushing the boundaries of what we consider possible, we can create structures that are not only awe-inspiring, but also sustainable, efficient, and practical. We understand that writing off a project, no matter how seemingly impossible, is never wise. However, erecting a skyscraper twice the height of the Burj Khalifa in the vast Saudi Arabian desert will undoubtedly push engineers, architects, and construction teams to new limits. We hope you found this video both interesting and informative. Observing how design and technology push the envelope of what is feasible is always fascinating. Who knows what incredible projects the future holds for us? That's all for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you in the next video.